Afternoon, everybody. Um, hopefully, I won't bore you to tears. Um, I'm not very uh, IT, too, so I might make a complete cock up here. Um, Rocket. Rocket is uh, an apple. Um, it was uh, developed by Crop and Food approximately um, 1989. Uh, Prem 96 is its horticultural name, and it was sampled, I think, a, around about the 2000 uh, Pit Fruit Conference when, uh, in those days, Crop and Food were very active trying to get uh, industry to partake or in the new varieties. Um, I tasted it, obviously, and I thought it was sensational. They were encouraging people to um, plant and trial these varieties in their orchards. So we began down that road. Um, the more we saw of it and the more we sampled it to friends and pickers and so on and so forth, the more we thought we were onto a winner. So we then asked for a marketing trial license and so on, and, and away we went. The key for us was the business plan, and it was all about the branding, the research, the marketing, positioning IP, the value proposition, and the license itself from Prevar. Prevar is a, the industry body's joint vehicle with the Australian apple and growers, pear growers, and plant and food. Okay, the variety needed to stack up against our competitors, and that's both apples, and I'll explain to you a bit of a lot of the other fruit and snack categories. It needed to be able to deliver value. We knew it was sensationally eating, but it, and it looked great, but we knew it was distinctively different. It had to demand presence of space. So all of our con conceptions in terms of how we were going to deliver it to the market had to tick all of those boxes. And our long-term plan is as per that fridge. So how could we deliver? Well, the simple answer was, was out came the red wine. And there was a lot of it. The packaging concept, we needed to be able to deliver it as a snack. Uh, develop the variety, the IP, the marketing, and so on and so forth. Um, we played around a lot with the packaging. Uh, spent hours and hours on it. Um, we drafted a marketing plan, began to send samples offshore, and the reactions we got supported our own views. The outcomes were Rocket was born, um, the tubes were finally signed off. We've had some mistakes, don't get me wrong on that, we've made a lot of mistakes. Our launch customers were decided upon. I sent some samples to Marks and Spencer. I rang up the food technologist, Emmett Looney is his name. Um, asked him if he'd received some samples, he said yes. He emailed me back and we spoke on the phone. He said to me, Phil, you wouldn't believe that as the premium world retailer, we literally get hundreds and hundreds of samples of fruit and vegetables. Your apple's outstanding. So he then instructed us to request their two category managers to make a pitch for our business to supply Marks and Spencer, and we're now in Marks and Spencer. Taiwan was the other market chosen because of the feedback from Asian type people, um, and also obviously the dynamics of the market and um, the price that we're able to achieve in Taiwan with most of our apples. Our sales strategy was um, thought over for a long time. We looked at what was wrong and what the challenges were in the apple industry. Consignment business, it's dumb business. So we don't sell an apple that's not on fixed price, even to Marks and Spencer. It can be done. Um, volume, uh, quality, and the terms of trade. Our terms of trade are far more advantageous than any of the other apple products I export. Our license was finally signed off on uh, late May of 2010, um, and we had a successful season last year, and we've continued to, to have a successful season this year. Key around that was the media strategy, and I think that's been a real key. Um, it's cheap if you do it properly, uh, and it can be extremely effective. 
Um, so we've entered into competitions. We won two awards at the New Zealand Food Awards last year, and we were one of the three uh, finalists for the Supreme Awards, and I thought that was quite a snazzy uh, outcome. We've also done the same in international fruit um, shows, and we were selected in the Innovation Award at Logistica um, at this year's um, Logistica Trade Show in Berlin. Um, here's just a couple of examples. The first one with the tubes, it's a new tube we've got under development. It's about just the size of a, a can. I was going to say Coke can, but I'm, I'm typically with a beer can. Uh, that's an article as a result of Logistica, and it's talking about how people are trying to move into new categories and how to expand your business. And that's certainly been one of our uh, goals and where we've been trying to, to get reach. Um, that's just a computer mock-up, the one in the middle. And the one on the right-hand side was Rocket being launched for Wimbledon with Marks and Spencer. Again, this is an article from Asia Fruit, all free. Um, they love something new, they love something different. Um, so it didn't cost us a dime, and it goes everywhere. One of the keys is the value proposition, and I just wanted to show this, show this slide. Um, on the right-hand column, you've got raw gala variety, something I'm sure most of you know about. And that's the approximate returns and what pops out the bottom. And we've got Rocket there on the left-hand side. So we're sort of two and a half times a standard uh, raw gala size. Build, build into this, please, that most people said you can't sell small apples. Um, our biggest uh, hindrance is the packaging and the value-added packaging. But we think that we've got several dollars per carton to take out of that and it's just the f fact of life that we don't have a big enough order in, a, in terms of getting to China and places like that where they can mass produce these things. Those tubes you're looking at, they're, uh, they're very expensive. So one of the other keys was it's a great grower return but also if you look at the commissions, even though we're limiting our agents' commissions, those commissions are very attractive. So that's part of this whole concept. Peter asked me to comment about research production, very little needed, it's an unbelievably friendly thing to grow. It's hard growing a big apple, it's not very hard growing a little apple. Uh, internally it's extremely sound, um, there is actually no vices for it, it's by far our best uh, outturning product. Um, thinning's a bit of an issue and cool storage it was um, a little bit prone to shrivel, but um, some bin liners and some um, uh, bagging in the cartons fixed that for virtually no outlay. Marketing, this was our priority. Um, innovations and new products are extremely expensive and challenging. Um, and we needed to support the brand and the product um, and equally spend a lot of time with our customers. Globalisation as a result of that media strategy and, and stuff we've uh, decided on a globalisation strategy. I don't think there is the capacity in New Zealand these days uh, and there are co also commercial reasons why you, you'd be, in my view, unwise to try and supply Northern Hemisphere 12 months of the year out of New Zealand. There's food miles, there's domestic producers, all of these sort of things are starting to murky the water and this is one of the problems I think that we all face no matter what industry you're in. So we've decided on a globalisation strategy um, that we're going to have licensees in the markets. Um, and as a result of Logistica primarily, you can see that we're inundated with people wishing to have licences. I just wanted to include this comment because I've been doing a little bit in the angel space and this Peter Thiel has been brought out to New Zealand by Trade and Enterprise a couple of weeks ago worth of one and a half billion. 
and he started off with PayPal and, and an original investor in Facebook. And his comment, the next innovative company will not be a PayPal or a Facebook because it's already been done before. Try something new, or you have to do something new globally, is one of the challenge. So you've got to focus on the product and the market, but also broaden it and think about how this is unique and how it hasn't been done before anywhere in the world. And I think a lot of us, when we look around and you look at new varieties of fruit or vegetables, a lot of them are on very slight variations of what we already had. And I think that that's not innovation. I think the time has come. The apple industry's got raw gala and braeburn. There's literally dozens of crosses. And they don't work, and they never will work. And people go to a lot of trouble and think they've got something new, and it will sell. But the consumer in some far off market won't see it like you do. And I think that's going to be the challenge for us in, all, in this whole area. If you look at the snack markets, they're doing things differently, and that's where I think our competition is, and that's where we're really targeting. Snack products going to the little mini bags, going to the individually rate, uh, packaged dates, um, those are examples of innovation. Those are examples of trying to push out their market share, and I think we have to fight back. And the world is on our side for once. Obesity, uh, the food innovation, um, food shows and everything, it's now quite fashionable for blokes at a barbecue to talk about food where a few years ago you would have been a raving puff if you talked about food at a barbecue, but it is quite fashionable now. So we need to get onto that bandwagon and we need to ride it for everything that we've got because the window will close again at some stage. So in summary, that's our vision. It's healthier, Rocket Apples are healthier than the, any of those other products. They're priced accordingly. Those tubes that you have in front of you sell in Havelock North New World at $4.99 for five apples, and yet customers can drive five minutes out of that supermarket car park and buy a kilo for a dollar, and yet there is a market there. So sometimes price is important, but other times it's not. I've just got one more slide on the same sort of thing, and these are where we see other fruit as our competitors, but we also see uh, these types of products as com competitors. We would like people to have a, a tube of rocket on their desk, in their golf trundler, in the little um, drinks part in your car, in the push chair, et cetera, et cetera. And that's our vision. So, under 10 minutes, Pete. Thank you.